Hey guys, Cody here. I'm on day 68 of doing the Odin project and I'm going to give you an update on what I did today. So today I spent a little bit less than seven hours working on the Odin project. And as we can see on the screen over here for December 21st, all that time was essentially spent coding because I'm working on the shopping cart project. I did spend a little bit of time doing my typing exercises in the morning. So I got that in as well, but all of it essentially was for coding today for that a little bit less than seven hours of work on the Odin project. So that's pretty much it. Let's dive into what I was working on with the shopping cart. So I mentioned yesterday about how I started the shopping cart project and I was just basically getting things set up from a folder and directory standpoint. And I'll go into that a little bit today, but I was able to actually build a little bit more substantial of an app today, as you can see from the browser over here. So let me refresh some of this and let's get into it. So here we are with the index.js. So this is just the file for taking everything and putting it on the DOM. So pretty simple there. It's just from the create react app, essentially boilerplate JavaScript. And then we have the app, and again, that's that's from the boilerplate stuff, but we're using something that I created for the routing for the client side rendering of components. So we have this route switch here, and if we go into this, this is where things get a bit more interesting. I'm gonna just scroll down to here, because this was what I started out with today, was making this, and this was just to have a return of these components for having appropriate routing for my two main pages, which is the home page and the shop page, in addition to having this nav component, which will be displayed on each page. So this is essentially uh, rendering the nav component and then additionally rendering these route components for the links that will be utilized for the two pages within the nav component. Let's go into the nav component now to see what I'm talking about with these links. So these links are like your A elements uh, within the HTML, kind of just like vanilla HTML stuff. So we have these links to allow those routes to be directing the user and generating the appropriate components for where the user is navigating by clicking on these links. So the two main ones here are the hero logo and the shop link here. So if we click on the hero logo, which is sensory lexicons over here, it'll just take us to this main page that we're already on. But if we click on the shop, it actually takes you to the shop page. So it, it's doing this on the client side. So what it's really doing is it is updating the DOM from having the content that's there for the home page, the home.js component that we have made, and rendering what's in the shop.js, which is what these are right here. Uh, we'll go into detail that a little bit more, but the essential with this is I have those two that are working. I want to be able to also have these in-page references, but I have to do something a little bit more special with the React uh, links for those. So when I click on about, it should kind of jump down here. Lexicons would jump down to these lexicons here and testimonials would jump down to the testimonials. But I got to figure that out a little bit later. Um, but for now, I then took my time to go back to figuring out the shop and building out the shop a bit more. So this is the kind of the final product that we'll go into today. But we started out essentially here with copying the samples from the sample sections, essentially here, copying that and putting it in here. So we can see literally I have the sample section, samples header, and then samples div. Uh, this originally just had some JSX dummy data uh, that was not really dynamic from the JSX standpoint of like using map over an array. And I utilize uh, that just to get to see what it looked like. And then 
I realized I should probably make another component for these product cards, and that is exactly what I did next. I then started making a test, since this is a lower level component, uh, something that's a bit more uh, pure. I don't know if it's exactly pure, but it is a definitely a simpler thing where it's not calling other components. So I decided to make that product card and I decided to start with testing since that's something that I recently learned about how to do in React. So we will see that I'm using some React libraries up here for doing the testing and also Jest uh, for actually testing the DOM and rendering components to the DOM for testing. So I actually got stuck here because I it was I mean this is fairly new. I'm familiar with Jest from a vanilla JavaScript perspective, but I have not done anything with React yet, really beyond uh, coding along with videos. So what I did was I went to the Odin Project's website's GitHub page and I went to their tests folder to find a, a component that I thought that the product card would look like in the end, and I essentially mirrored that component in that I copied similar things, similar libraries that it was calling, and also these describe and test statements. And I really just tried to start with one test and recreate that, but for my data. So we have up here, I have some default data that I'm using, and I have a rendering function to utilize this render function to render the actual component for the tests below. And so within each test, I'm able then to use this render product card component to create unique card components, or to yeah, create unique product card components within each test. Uh, and I use some of this default data for filling in the details that I want to ignore essentially for each test. So if we go down here, within this test, we have the render product card being called, we have the default data being provided, but then we have an additional argument here within this um, object to replace the ID with this specific ID, not the default EX2ODS, but this XUAK3. So that's replacing that ID and then down here we're going to get what was rendered from the screen specifically looking for something that has a test id which is a way of getting it's an attribute that you can set within the jsx for getting specific components and so i had set a test id within the uh, product cards for being equal to p dash card and then we we get that, we set it to this variable, and then we do tests on that rendered component if it exists. If it doesn't exist, then this is not gonna work. Uh, this first one will fail and these other two will fail as well. But this first one will check if it's even in the document and if it is, it'll pass. If it won't, it'll fail. This next one will check for ID and if it's equal to this XUAK3, which is what we would expect from making this change up here. and. Also, I have a not here to make sure it's not the default product idea that I uh, added up here. So those tend to be true uh, for the test when I was writing it, uh, making it initially, um, but that was obviously why I'm writing this test to be able to make the product card component. And I made some additional ones to check things like the name. So the name is a data that is provided to the product card uh, in the product card object or that was what was in my mind at the time but i wanted not just the name to be added as text i wanted some additional text to be added to that name so we can see that over here so under apples lexicon it's the name is apples for the product data name but then it's also a pending apple lexicon so i want to get that product name uh, by text that is rendered on the screen so i'm going to use this and if it's in the document, then this test will pass. And then down here, I was doing it for the cost for product data. And I was doing this by test ID, so P dash cost within the component. The product cost was then uh, run with dot text content to see what the text content was. Because again, I was doing some 
where I wanted to have displayed a money symbol plus the number without with keeping the original data just be a number. So ultimately, I wanted a string that was dollar sign 500. And I did not want the string of 500 or just the number 500. I did not want it to be the default cost, which was 100. And I did not want it to be the default cost of 100 plus a, a dollar symbol at the front. So this was the these were the tests that I started out with to actually make the product card component. And let's jump into that now. So the product card component, I started out with really just going back to the home and going back to these sample divs, I would utilize these as a kind of foundation. So I borrowed some of the classes for the styling within the card component, but then I added additional things for these data. So if we go back to here, we can actually see that these are the simple versions. And then over in the shop, we have more complex product cards with prices, uh, additional uh, text being added, and then also a quantity plus an uh, incrementer and decrementer for the quantity. But before I actually made that functional and started adding some of these more fancy things up here, I stepped up a level. I realized I had these product cards, but I wanted to make these buttons functional and I needed something to actually do that with. So I needed a cart and I was going to put the cart in the nav and that's just what I did. I created a cart component and that cart component is passed within nav and within the cart component it's just an icon from font awesome and the cart count so we can see over here we have the font awesome icon and a number that indicates the count of items that are in the cart I originally had just zero for that value, so then I realized I need to get the item length. I need to store my items in the cart somewhere. So what I did was I went back to our route switch, which is kind of like the top level of our app, and I wanted the shopping cart to be available to each page, and specifically the nav page, or nav component. So I created this shopping cart state up here with just an empty array since they shouldn't have anything in their cart to start out with and then that shopping cart will then be passed as a property within nav which is what we see down here and then that will be passed into cart which is what we see over here and within cart we'll use shopping cart dot length to get the length of the array which will then display something over here in this text Div. Once I had this object or this uh, state that was set within the route switch, I was able to then think about, okay, how am I going to make this these buttons down here actually be able to alter this shopping cart state? So that's when I added this add to cart function. And originally this add to cart function was this line, this line, and this line. So we create the new shopping cart from the old shopping cart and then we concatenate the product data that is passed to this function to the new shopping cart and then we set the shopping cart to the new shopping cart with that set shopping cart function and that worked so it essentially did what we see over here when i click on the plus we see the shopping cart is increasing in number and that was great but then when i started investigating what i was actually putting in the shopping cart i was actually duplicating the data for each product so if i clicked a product several times there would be several product objects for the same product there so it'd be duplication of data and all i really want in the shopping cart is the data id for the product and the quantity so then i added some well, I'll get into that just a little bit later, but let me go back to the product card because I take this add to cart data, uh, add to cart function, and I pass it to the shop as a property. And within shop, I pass that property to 
a property within product card. And within product card, I put that add to cart function within a handle add function. And I use that handle add function on the clicking of this plus button. So when a user clicks this, as we saw earlier, this product cart will then uh, have additional items added to it. And so that worked. And that was great, but I had that problem that I said earlier about the additional objects being added for a single product. So then I put in some logic to detect if the product was already in the cart, then we should add its quantity to what's already in the qua uh, quantity within the cart. So essentially adding one to that current quantity and then setting the shopping cart to that new shopping cart. Or if it doesn't have it, then setting it to uh, just adding the product data specifically to the product cart. So I have some additional things here, which I'll, I'll touch in a little bit, but that was essentially what I had for this logic was to prevent the duplication of product data and just uh, minimally adding by adjusting the quantity for a specific product with a specific ID. And that was, that was good, but I want to also reflect that with these product cards because ultimately I want to make these product quantities within the product cards inputs so that users can type in a number quantity instead of having to just click, 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 click all the time to get, if they want 20 sensory lexicons of oranges, then they can do that. So, but they can do that more easily by typing. So I was trying to connect it to what is generating these quantities within these cards. And if we look at the card, we see that the quantity is here and that is being pulled from the deconstruction of this product data, which is a property that is being given to product card. And so the product data has these three properties in addition to this quantity. And if we step up a level, it's coming from this array that I have for all products data. I don't have this, I didn't have this array set at the route switch level because I knew that was where I wanted to have my shopping cart and I didn't necessarily need all this data to be generated there. So I put it in here to be able to um, just dynamically make these product cards. And as we can see, this isn't a state, this is just an array. So these quantities are pretty much stagnant uh, so when I do this, all it's going to do is send is run that add to cart function and that add to cart function is not going to modify these states, which are then passed as in the product data to the product card and rendered here. So it's not going to be able to find it. I tried to get around this by setting quantity within this as a state that could be updated and then when this handle add function is run, then the new quantity would be returned from the add to cart, which we would be calculating in add to cart. And then I would set the quantity equal to new quantity if this new quantity is, is actually something, which it will be. But it doesn't work. Uh, I, I had it working at one point where it, it would add after you click twice, but then this would be two items up here in the shopping cart and it would be one item down here for that specific lexicon, even though I added that lexicon twice. So that wasn't working. And then I had the opposite problem where I was able to actually iterate or uh, increase the number within the product card, but then the shopping cart wasn't working. So I tried a couple different things. I think ultimately what needs to happen is there needs to be a tighter link between the all products data and specifically these quantities. I think these quantities might need to be 
separated out from this and this all products data needs to be linked up with the shopping cart data in some sort of way. Uh, one way that I'm thinking about it right now is to, when this is rendered, have this be a state and then actually looking to see if anything in the shopping cart data passes a property here is actually within this and doesn't have the appropriate quantity so it's not equal to the quantity that's within this array and then uh, updating it accordingly I don't know if that's gonna work that's something I need to test out tomorrow to actually see however this is where I'm at today so that's that's pretty much all I have for you guys today if you guys are liking these videos then please give us a like and if you're interested in following emily and i on our journey into web dev with the odin project then definitely subscribe have a good day and i will see you guys tomorrow